So if somebody's a little bit late, I'll probably greet them when they come in, but we're gonna forge on ahead. Um, I'm obviously your instructor, Heather Klein, and uh, I teach this, uh, I'm a full-time uh, uh, studio-based artist and educator. So I teach this course from my home in my home studio. Uh, so the first thing I like to point out is communication for this course and how that happens because I don't have an office space on campus is that you can contact me through the course email. I prefer that to the messaging system because it uh, gives us a record of what we've been talking about back and forth, or I should say writing about. Um, but also this space is available for meetings. And that could be a simple talking meeting where we're just using the mics without video, or it could be a video conference um, where you share uh, what you're working on with me. And uh, I'm very open to meeting with you. I don't have a set meeting time where I'm sitting in here. Um, but if you send me an email with a request for a meeting and a couple of suggested times, I can book you in. And sometimes just a little five minute meeting can really be helpful. So please take advantage of that. Um, the other thing that's a little bit different with this particular section of the course is that there's gonna be these optional additional webinars. And uh, these are gonna be a, a short introduction to each unit as the unit starts. So uh, I really encourage people to sign up for these optional webinars. I've got three different times. I can see some people have already signed up. I'm gonna spend about 10 to 15 minutes getting you an orientation to the particular unit and the materials and things that you're going to need. And then I'm gonna be open for people to ask questions. So they're short, but they could be extremely helpful. And there's one for each of the units. So check them out and see if there's a time that works for you. And I really encourage you to think about getting these short orientations. Um, already you are doing your week one work, which part of that is being here at this webinar. Uh, there's a few things for you to look through, including the course outline, and the materials list and the final portfolio instructions. So I was mentioning that there's the course outline. Um, this is document is an overview document. It's a good reference document if you have any questions about something to do with uh, etiquette or uh, assessment. Something that's really helpful in this course outline is this list because mm -hmm. it's a hard copy list of everything that you need to do for each due date for this course. So if you're ever kind of in the middle of a unit and you don't quite know if you've gotten everything, you can come back to this kind of checklist and make sure that you've completed all the work that you're supposed to complete. And it also tells you what it's worth in terms of marks. The other thing to note on this course outline is under assignments, um, something about online courses is that they attempt to be a little more flexible than some of the courses you may take. Because of that, um, I have a policy that if you contact me prior to the due date, I'll give you a no questions asked one week extension. So if you are panicked because you're juggling a lot of different things during a particular deadline, contact me and get that one week extension. Beyond that, you have to have some sort of formal documentation for why you haven't handed in your assignments on time or you will be penalized. So do look through this course outline and do come back and reference that list of work in this document, it's pretty helpful. Something to keep in mind with this course is you can always click on the title of the course and it gets you back to this main page, which I find really helpful even when I'm going through the course and looking at the different content. I know I can always get back to the start by clicking on the title. The main content of the course is under this content modules assignments tab. The first document here, this guide to digital imaging, it's just a resource. So there's nothing that you have to do in this area. There's no assignments, but it's to help you because this course really relies on you taking pictures of your work and putting them up in the blog. I wanted to give you some help with that if it's something that you're not as confident about. So this guide to digital imaging has some cool things. It has links. These blue highlighted uh, terms are always a link to it something. 
uh, to some free programs that you can try out, like this GIMP program, which is basically a free version of Photoshop. Um, there's also some different tutorials that you can look at, both video and written, on basic photo technique. Notice how I'm using the arrow at the bottom of the document. That's one way you can click through the content of any of these sections. The other thing you can do is you can just go to the table of contents and click on one of the headings and it'll take you to that part of the unit. Mm -hmm. The first unit in the course is photography, which we were talking about before uh, this webinar began because we were talking a bit about materials. Um, this first unit, all you need is access to a camera. And people always ask me, well, what kind of camera do I have to have? Any cameras acceptable, including uh, phone cameras, as long as you use them properly. So something to be aware of is if you're just using a point and shoot camera, there's gonna be limitations on how you can set it up. So you have to be really smart about how you set up your setting, your lighting, and how you frame your photos so that you get the photo you want. So you can use any camera, but use it well. When you read the introduction, it tells you what you have to do in the unit. It also tells you if there's a forum question for the unit, which I'm gonna look at in a minute. And then there's a short written assignment at the beginning of each unit. These read and respond assignments are really literally meant to be short. So um, think about how you can ask the question in a couple of sentences or a short paragraph. Um, and uh, each of these written assignments is related to the content um, of the unit. This first one is trying to get you to look more closely at design through looking at something called gestalt principles. Gestalt. Um, once you start to get into the units, the photography one has some extra stuff because I thought you could use it uh, both for photography technique, but also for the rest of the course. So there's something like this composition area that gives you strategies for how to design your artwork that you could use in any assignment in this course. So there's a few extra things in the first unit and then you get to your assignments. All the assignments look the same. They've got the due date, they've got the approximate amount of time I think it might take you uh, this, of course, varies from student to student. It's got the objectives of the assignment, which is what I'm marking you on, so it's good to pay attention to that. The equipment and materials you need, and then there's a written description of the assignment, which you can read through, but also you're going to notice that there's videos in almost all of these assignments, and they're extremely useful. Uh, for example, this first one is what I call this is an explanatory video. I know it's that kind of video because it's short. So here's a trick for you. If you look at the video and it's under three minutes, that means it's going to be explaining the assignment with examples from former students or from other artists. These are really useful and I would watch them as I read through the assignment. There's also longer videos in this course and they are step-by-step -step how to videos. They literally show you how to do something. Um, this first one in assignment one is actually optional because you might just point and shoot and do what's called an in-camera edit where you set up your photograph and take it and don't manipulate the photo after the fact. But if you wanna try doing some digital imaging, you can watch this how-to video. Um, I'm gonna show you a different one. Let's just go back to the main page of the course. Let's go into unit two. And in unit two, again, you got this introduction, a little written assignment, and then you can go to assignment three. There's eight major assignments in this course, two for each unit. And in this uh, assignment, the video, when you click on it, is long. It's 10 minutes. That's how you know it's going to show you step by step how to do the assignment. So why I'm pointing this out is because if I was getting ready to do this assignment and I read through it and saw that it was a long video, I would probably get out my materials, my paper, my pencils, whatever drawing materials I'm using, and I would work while I watched the video. So 
Um, you know, that's really how these how-to videos are intended. So kind of keep an eye on how long the videos are and prep yourself before you start watching them. Hi, it's me. Oh. <laughs> and I always say hi, it's me, Heather Kwan. Is this making sense so far? Yes. Good, okay, so when you get to the bottom of an assignment, it tells you exactly what you have to submit to be marked. And this course is kind of interesting because you get marked twice. The first time is by posting your work in our blog space, or as I like to call it, our studio space. Uh, you can get to it through the activities tab that's always on the upper left mm -hmm. of the course. If you were taking this course in person, we'd have a classroom wall. And each week you would be asked to bring your work in and put it up on the wall and we would talk about it together as a class. That's what our blog's for, it's our classroom space. So you'll note that you had to do a first blog post. Uh, let's look at everybody. This is a very handy feature in the blog. You can put the visible individuals to be all users and then you can see what other people are doing and what they're posting, which can be really helpful when assignments start going up. And also you can kind of get to know the people in our class. But as you start to get all of those posts up in the blog, sometimes you just wanna check on your own work. And so you can actually go into this list and you can just highlight your name and see oh yeah, I posted everything I needed to post for my unit. So keep that in mind when you're checking the blog. I leave it on view all users because I like to see what people are doing. So let's say that you've completed your first drawing assignment, assignment three, and you've posted it in the blog. Um, what's gonna happen is once you've posted everything in the unit by the due date, I'm going to mark it. And I'm not going to post your comments. I'm going to send you a private email that tells you where you succeeded in the assignment, but also where you could maybe improve the assignment. I'm also gonna give you marks. And up in the dashboard, which is the top scroll line here, I can click on these three little lines, get my dashboard open, and you'll notice that under Art 220, there's grades. You'll have your own grade book and I will put in your marks as you hand in your assignments so that you'll know how you're doing on the course. That's the first time you get marked. Um, I have a question. Yeah, for sure. Um, is the questions um, included in the assignment for the blog post or um, I didn't see them in okay. here? So uh, on the main page of the course under mm -hmm. week one, if you scroll down, there's how to start your blog. Okay. And it has suggestions of questions that you could answer to. So that's what these people have been doing. They've been looking at the possible questions and they're using mm -hmm. it as a way to do their first blog post. And also uh, on this first week, there's a forum. So let's talk about that right now. Um, the forums are a discussion area. There's four forums throughout the course. There's not one for every unit. So in the introduction to the unit, it always tells you whether or not you have a forum and they only open up during the time that you should be exploring that forum question. So right now, week one discussion question is open. The idea behind the forum is to give you a chance to talk kind of back and forth to your classmates, but also it's to get you to think about something a little bigger in terms of the art world or art making beyond just the hands-on skills that we're gonna be using in our unit. So each of the forum question kind of asks a big question uh, or big idea question. You are expected to post twice, once in response to the question and mm -hmm. once in response to one of your fellow students, which you can see uh, Michael has already done there here. Um, short answers, but properly written is what we're looking for. Um, every once in a while I get one that looks like somebody was texting. Um, please use proper sentence structure, but uh, keep your answers short and then everybody will read them. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guarantee for you. Okay, so let's go back into one of the, notice how these drop down boxes, just click open and close to the arrow. 
Let's go back into the assignment. So let's look at unit three, which again, it's got that things you have to do. Notice there's no forum question listed on this particular unit. You get a break. There is a short um, read and respond assignment in the introduction. And then when you go to assignment five, it's got that typical thing of the due date, how long I think it'll take for you to complete it. And then it's got the materials and equipment that you need. So we were discussing materials at the beginning of this webinar. There's a main materials list, both in the week one area, but also at the bottom of this kind of group of boxes, there's something called resources. And all the major documents for this course can also be found under resources. And so there's your materials list. And it's not six pages of materials, thank goodness, but I got it organized in a couple of different ways just to help you out. So let's say you make art right now at home and you got a lot of stuff kicking around. You could look at the list by category and figure out if you have things that would work for doing these assignments. So for example, the newsprint pad that's for your first drawing assignment could be replaced by an inexpensive kid's drawing paper pad as long as it's a decent size. Always pay attention to the size requirements for assignments because that will impact your mark. Um, notice under the acrylic paints, I've got, you could buy either separate paints or you could buy an inexpensive acrylic set at many of these stores. The second way that it's sorted is by unit. So for the first unit, all you need is access to a camera. For the second unit, you need your drawing supplies. For the third unit, you need your painting supplies. And for your fourth unit, you need your block printing supplies. So if you wanna buy your uh, materials as you need them, no problem. But keep in mind, often the block printing supplies are the most difficult to source. So you may have to end up ordering them online. So don't leave your block printing supplies to the last minute or you'll be in trouble. Um, the final thing that I have on here is some of the different places where you can buy materials uh, if you are in Saskatchewan. I do have students who take this course from all over the place, so sometimes you're not in Saskatchewan. Um, I also have students who take this course from rural locations where it's hard to get art supplies. So the other thing I've included is a list for an online order. I picked Opus Art Supplies out of Vancouver because they're Canadian. Um, I found them to be the best price generally, and they're free shipping over $100. So I think if you're gonna order online, this is my recommendation, having ordered a lot of online supplies over the last 10 years. Um, there's sometimes hidden costs ordering from certain companies. Uh, the American companies, sometimes you have to pay duty. So uh, that's why I have recommended Opus I don't own any shares in the company. <laughs> There's only one little problem with Opus though, and that's they won't mail you separate sheets of artist paper. They have minimum amounts, which is like 25 sheets. So you'll notice when, even though I've got this nice list here from Opus that even has the item number that you can look up to place your order, you're still gonna have to buy some of your paper separately. So you're gonna have to find another source for that. If you're having a challenge finding a source for certain materials, drop me a note and I'll try to help you out. Uh, but I have, uh, I think I covered it off pretty good. Every, every term I kind of add to this uh, structure of this list to try to make it easier for everyone. So does that make good sense? Yes, yeah. Yeah, and are any of you guys based in Regina or all of you or none of you? Um, I'm here. <laughs> Okay. Living in Regina, I'm not sure with everyone. Yes, yes I also live in Regina. <laughs> okay, so something to keep in mind is there is an art store at the University of Regina in the basement of the Visual Arts Building. Um, the only thing I will say to you is they have small amounts of their supplies, and in terms of their acrylic paint, they bring in the most expensive brand of acrylic paint that you can buy. It's the brand I use as a professional artist. So um, I've talked to them a little bit about this, but at this time, that's what they're able to bring in. 
So if you don't want to invest that heavily in acrylic paint, again, I would think about just buying an expensive set. From a uh, do they paper. also have a block paper? Um, they have the blocks. They have the um, they have the speedball easy blocks. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I, I hope I'm saying that right. Let's go back to our printmaking list so I can make sure I'm not. There's about 15 different brands. They have the speedy cut carving blocks or easy cut, and they have cutting tools generally, and some paper and ink. But the amount they have is limited. So if you want to get in there and get it, um, I would soon. Um, you can also buy the Speedball Super Value Block Printing Starter Kit from various places, including Opus. So if you're not going to order everything online, but you still might think about buying that starter kit, because I think it's your best value for buying your block printing supplies. It has almost everything you need except for the paper. Like it's got your cutting tool, your block. Okay. Yeah, so it's a pretty good deal. Um, okay, so let's see. I've covered communication. I've, we've taken a look at the different assignments and how they work. We've talked about posting your grades. We haven't talked about final portfolio. Um, and again, under resources, you can always go directly to these final portfolio instructions. There's also links to them in each assignment at the end. There's a little link to the final portfolio. Uh, again, this is where you get marked for the second time. Uh, at the end of this course, you have to submit a hard copy portfolio and look at this list because it's not every assignment. Um, and you have to submit a digital portfolio. Um, what's that? It's just basically a presentation. It shouldn't be too difficult to do because you'll already have photographs of your work that you've posted online on the blog. So you just have to use those photographs to put together this little presentation. Um, how you submit it to me is outlined in this document. If you are in Regina, you probably wanna just drop off your portfolio at the visual arts office. Uh, all the information you need to do that is in this document. Um, and you'll note that I put on the materials list a piece of cardboard or foam core or something like that to make a portfolio. Please do pack up your work in a some sort of cardboard portfolio. It could even be made with found cardboard, but protect your work so that when I go to market, I can give you a good mark because I can really see what it looks like and it's not damaged. So again, pay attention to this list as you're working. Um, it'll tell you what assignments you have to submit in their actual form uh, in, the heart, in the final portfolio. So does that make sense to everybody? Yes, yeah. Excellent. And so let's say you read my evaluation and you think, oh, all I have to do is change this and I could really improve my artwork. Um, you are welcome to modify your work before you submit it in the final portfolio to improve your marks. But also keep in mind that your mark might go down if, for example, um, I'll give you a good example. I had somebody submit their portfolio and they'd done all of their work on eight and a half by 11 typewriter paper. And there's actually size requirements for quite a few of the assignments. So pay attention to that when you're completing your work. That's the kind of thing I can't see in the photographic image on the blog. So if you submit your final portfolio and it's radically different than what the project required, you might lose marks. So keep that in mind. Okay, so final portfolio forms, blog space, assignments, communication. I can't think of anything else I wanted to share with you. Do you guys have any other questions? Um, not so, f not right now, <laughs> maybe yeah. later on though. Okay, feel free to email them to me. And also there's this sneaky little thing called ask a question and find an answer, mm -hmm. which is actually kind of my blog. So already I've got a little note here on how to make sure that your images are rotated the proper way before you put them into the blog because people often have trouble with that. So if you send a question that I think will be really good for everyone to know the answer to, I'll probably post it in this blog. Okay, well, hey, thank you very much for coming to this um, webinar. And I really look forward to seeing your first posts on the course.
And I hope you have a great uh, end of week and weekend. Yeah.